Okay, I just rewrote the answers that we calculated a second ago. And now let's look at the limits. And let's look at some limits that we probably understand. Maybe we don't know for sure that we understand it. But let's take a look at a very simple case. Let's say that my mass M is hanging from two wires, and those wires are straight up. You all know the answer to this already. If the two wires are hanging straight up, what does T1 have to be equal to? Somebody give me a thought. Ian, yeah, what do you think? Would it be equal to the force of gravity? Okay. Is that it? Anybody agree with that or disagree with that? Uh, Andrew, up in front, you have a thought? And the force on T1 would be one half force of gravity. Okay. So gravity, you're right, but divided by two, and T2 would be what? Also one half the force of gravity. Good. We have to hold up the whole weight. If we have two wires doing it, each wire is going to hold up half the weight. Exactly right. So we know this answer. How does that fit in to this? Right? Remember, this was general for these things at angles. And now we're looking at specific cases. So what would theta 1 be equal to in this case? Remember, our original drawing looked like this. T1 was going up at theta 1. T2 was going up at theta 2. So Andrew, let me ask you again. <clears throat> in this case, what would theta 1 be equal to? Zero degrees. Zero degrees. What's theta 2 equal to? Zero degrees. Zero degrees. So we need to know what these things are. What is sine of zero degrees? Andrew, what's sine of zero degrees? Zero. Okay. What's cosine of zero degrees? One. What is tangent of zero degree? Zero. Tangent of zero degrees is also zero. Hmm. That seems like it could be a problem, right? Because we have a tangent in the denominator. But when I have a tangent in the denominator, I also have a sine in the numerator. And so we are left with this question. What is sine of zero degrees over tangent of zero degrees? And do you know how to do that, Andrew? I believe so. I'm pretty sure it would, just, it would be the same thing as uh, sine squared over cosine, which would be, uh, which would make it zero over one. Uh-huh. Well, let's see. We've got sine of zero degrees over tangent of zero degrees. We know that sine of zero degrees is going to go to zero. But tangent of zero degrees is going to go to zero. So this thing is either going to go to zero, or it's going to go to infinity, or it's going to go to something in between zero and infinity. So how do we figure out what it does? Anybody ever heard of something called L'Hopital's rule? OK, what is L'Hopital's rule? Uh, Ian, yeah, what's L'Hopital's rule? Where you find the derivative of the top and the bottom separately. That's right. When you have something that's going to 0 over 0, the way you figure out what it equals is you look at the derivative of the top versus the derivative of the bottom. Okay? So this is something that you may have learned already. It's called L'Hopital's rule. And what it says is, if I have sine of theta over, over um, tangent of theta, then I need to take the derivative of the top and put it over the derivative of the bottom. 
And when you do that, when you do a derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom, and then you plug in theta equals zero, in fact, what you get is not zero, and not infinity, you get one. Okay, and I'll let you work that out yourself. Derivative of sine is easy, derivative of tangent is a little bit harder, but not too bad. You, in fact, get one. And so look what happens. T1 now becomes what? <clears throat> T1 equals mg over cosine of zero degrees plus this thing, which we just said becomes one, and we know that cosine of zero degrees is also one. And so in fact, we do get mg over two. T2 equals this stuff, which becomes one, mg over something similar to what we had before, we also get mg over two, okay? Yeah, Ian. Do we need to do the rule for sine over tangent? Do we need to do the rule for sine over tangent? Because it's simplified, it would just come up with cosine. Ah, let's see. So maybe we don't even need to use L'Hopital's rule. Good question. If I have sine of theta over tangent of theta, that is sine of theta over sine theta over cosine theta. The sines will cross out, and that becomes cosine theta. So you're exactly right. If those are, in fact, the same angle, then you can just simplify. If they are different angles, theta 1 and theta 2, then you have to go to L'Hopital's. Yeah, good point. <laughs> 